Hello and welcome to the CIIE in Shanghai 2020. My name's Helen Bentley and this is Xinhua Live. I'm currently in one of the exhibition areas dedicated to automobiles. This stretches over 30,000 square meters. And this year, there's a new addition of a special area for automated vehicles. And luckily today, I'm going to take you to speak to one such company and find out about their products. Welcome to the Pony AI stall. Hello, hi. Hello, Helen. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Let, tell me a little bit about yourself. What's your name? And a little bit about Pony, please. Okay, thank you very much. My name is Zhang Haizhou. I'm the Public Relations Director of Pony AI. Pony AI is actually a, a self-driving company. It's, we started in three months in the United States. So a self-driving company. Yeah. What does that mean? Does that mean that you make the vehicles or do you make the technology? What, what, what's a self-driving self company? Very good question. We don't make the vehicles, but we work with, with the car makers. We just um, make our technology to fit with their cars okay. and the truck. Okay, and you said you were established in America? Sure, well, we established in three months back in 2016. But from day one, we decided we were developing two markets, that is China and the United States. Okay, mm -hmm. so Pony uh, AI is an, uh, an American company, but with, with roots and many connections to China, you mean? We'll say we're a multinational company multinational or company. international company. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, is this your first time at the CIIE at Pony AI? Sure, this is Pony AI's first, you can see our debut at uh, CIIE. Welcome to the, to the CIIE. Thank you very much, we're very honoured. For those of you who have just tuned in, my name's Helen Bentley and this is Xinhua Live. I'm coming to you from the automobile section of the exhibition this year. And I'm speaking to Pony AI about their autonomous vehicles. And uh, you're about to show me something, tell me a bit. Sure, of course. What is um, this? This is an autonomous truck. It is an ordinary truck, but it fitted with our, our system to make it can be automatic. Okay, so an automatic truck. So you're saying that this huge vehicle one day or currently will be on our roads? Uh, one day it will hit the road, but at the moment we're still in the R&D stage. You can see this, this truck, it has a lighter on that side, so that is its eyes. Okay, so we're looking at the blue, silver and black box. Sure, we have one each on, on both sides. Okay, okay. And apart from those boxes on either side, what else makes this vehicle different from your usual truck? It has a brain. It has our, a brain. Yeah, our self-developed computer system to make it can think, can per perceive what is ahead. Okay. And what would be the benefits for a long haul company to switch over to autonomous vehicles? Huge benefits, um, because um, when you drive this autonomous car, you don't get tired. You know, tired in driving is very dangerous. And uh, you don't, this car, it will never go after drinking. It doesn't drink, you know, it doesn't get some booze. <laughs> Actually, I was going to ask about that. So it doesn't drink booze, but is it? It's, it's gas, I assume, or is it a hybrid, or how? How is it? I mean, are you involved with the vehicle itself, or just the technology that drives this? We do the technology, but our system is definitely fitted to different types of cars. Okay. This one is a traditional gas or car, but on that side we have our our car that is a hybrid, and we also our system is fitted to electric cars and also fitted to other different types of cars. So we are just actually building a virtual driver that can be adapted to different types of vehicles, so not just one specific kind of car. Okay, so that's super interesting, Tony. So we've, we've, we've just seen, oh, thank you very much. So we've just seen a autonomous truck. But when people talk about autonomous vehicles, the first thing that comes to mind is, of course, the car. And here we have yeah, one this is such a car. example. Tell me a little bit about this car, please. Okay, so um, actually this one is the latest version of our Pony AI self-developed, self-driving technology. As you can see, this is a brand new Nexus RX450H. That is a hybrid car. Okay, and just looking at it from, from a layman's point of view, there's a couple of differences I can see straight away. So on the top of the car, we have what seems to be a, a, an extra bonnet or, or a hat. <laughs> Tell me about this, what, what is this thing? Okay, I'll just do a bit of introduction of the cap. Yeah. That is not its hat, that is its eyes. Okay. You know, um, actually, we call it a sensor fusion system. It has different types of sensors. It has LiDAR and it, is, it has radars around and it also has cameras. We have seven cameras around it. So that's a, 
sensor sensor fusion system the sensor fusion. a fusion of different types of sensors okay okay and mm -hmm. and that is that different to you know uh, previous iterations of how it works you know with it being explain it a little bit more to me okay so um i is an important part of making this car automatic and also it has one brain at the back of the car but let's begin with the eye you can see the screen at the back of it that is the world in its eyes so on the left hand side of it is what the world is like in the eyes of uh, lidar of radar and on the right hand side it's camera so with this kind of system this car can see surrounding area of 200 meters it can spot and perceive every small piece of uh, maybe obstacles ahead of it even a cat or as well as a dog okay so i'm looking at that right now and i can see that there is um like a blue scale of obstructions i i assume yeah. um so so the car is is scanning and it can tell that there's people moving there's right. uh, immobile um blocks so so this is like you said it, it's just like an eye it's, it's how it decides yeah, it to navigate around it yes. okay yeah. and and i see this huge on the back of the screen here but uh, where, where would this be normally would it be inside the vehicle so so myself as a as someone sitting in the back would, would i be reassured by seeing that or would i not see that during you can see that in there because there is a screen just uh, in in the front part of the car it can tell you uh, what is around the car and other key data of the uh, of the car okay so that's the first thing i noticed that was different with what you've explained to be the, the eye on top what's this down here <laughs> it, it looks I mean, it looks a bit menacing. It looks like a black eye on the side, but what does it do? You have very sharp eyes. <laughs> okay, this is uh, our new setting in this kind of new system. Normally, we just have all the sensors around on top of it, but uh, now on this, from this new system, we have the LiDAR here to make sure it can avoid any blind spots. Because normally when we're driving, we know that on the right-hand side or on the left-hand side is somewhere that is not easily be spotted when there is, for example, a kid or a cat. That's fascinating. And straight away, I know that you said you work with car manufacturers in partnership to create these vehicles. So does this just get stuck on after it's made or is this part of the manufacturing process? Like it's how... got stuck, stuck on after it's made. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's pretty... so, so literally I could bring my own car, say, and, um... you know... Sure, Would that sure. be something in the future? Sure, as I said, yeah, that's definitely something in the, in the future. As I said, we don't just make the system for any specific type of car. We just want to make a virtual driver that can be adapted to different types of vehicles. So we've talked a lot about the vehicles and what they do and, and how they function. But I just want to like put some questions to you now about the future and how this is going to work. So. I've come here, I want to buy this car, I want to take it home with me. Is that possible today? Oh, that's still too early okay. because to be to be frank, autonomous driving technology is still at very early stage. It's still during the R&D period. Maybe in a few years you can have it okay. in your own car, but we need to make sure the technology is safe enough, it's reliable enough okay. before it can go into your household. So how do you know it works? If, if, we, if I can't take it and drive it around now, how do we know if, if they function on the road? Do you want to take a try? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, okay. have you been testing them? Like, can you go okay. out with um, Actually, Pony and I started back in 2016 and our first car hit the road in 2017. Now we have 100 cars around the world, mainly in China and the United States. And this autonomous driving test miles is um, 3 million, 3.5 million kilometers we've already tested and without any accidents. Oh, wow. And so testing, what does that, does that mean that it just goes out on its own or are people inside them? You know, how does this, this testing work? How do we know it's really safe? We do have one people inside because that's according to law. You must have a safety operator sitting on the driver's position, but he doesn't operate a car unless something really, really dangerous or unexpected things happened. Um, but that happens very rarely and uh, it goes on the urban road so it doesn't go into any specific park it just goes on the urban road for example in guangzhou since 2000 and, uh, 2018 december we've been operating china's first robot taxi that is autonomous driving taxi fleet so we've been operating that for more than 700 days so that's, that's amazing for, uh, yeah, so, for so us, I... I commute by that you, you commute yeah, by that. Of course. So if I came to Guangdong, I could just come and hail down one of these taxis. Yeah, of course I show you around. That would be exciting. That would be super exciting. Okay, can I have a look inside? Sure, of course I want to take inside. So be careful. This is sort of uh, 
This is not really very practical, is it? I'm going to get into the driving seat of our Thomas car because in the future, this will be empty, right? <laughs> the seat will be here. The seat will still sure be there, but there'll no one here. Okay. How do you feel? I feel comfortable. I mean, it's just like a normal car, isn't it? I mean, do you think in the future that maybe the design of the cars themselves will change? Maybe seats will go around in a square? Or do you think we'll always be comfortable with, with our usual type of I'm car? I'm sure that that will be happening in the future. Because um, nowadays, what you can see with autonomous driving is it's freeing your hands, but that's only one part of the value it can deliver. In the future, I think it, it's going to change the relation between you, the car, and the road. So your car will just not be a kind of transport tool. It can be part of your life. It can be part of your social. Mm. Well, to be honest, this sort of thing sounds great to me because I've never actually learned to drive. So if the future was going to be autonomous vehicles where I could just sit in the back and not even have to talk to the driver, I'd be happy with that sometimes. Look, that's enough from me. I'm here at the CIIE. This is Xinhua Live. And we have just had an excellent opportunity to look around Pony AI store and see all of the amazing technology and probably the future of automation, of automobiles, right? automatic driving thank you very much everyone thank you very much and stay tuned we will have more live feeds from this event as it proceeds thank you very much see you later bye bye